Time to rock and roll! Hello my friends. My name is Bot Mathematician and this is Hello Mansa. Also, Chief Investigative Reporter Dora joined us this evening. Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. The Feast of Winter Vale is coming. Great Father Winter returns to Azeroth to shower all its inhabitants with gifts. Even the disobedient Rafam can count on a miracle that will help him get out of the Badlands jail. We in turn, decided to analyze the Christmas meta game to determine the most effective decks for achieving the legendary rank in the last season of the outgoing year. To do this, we had to collect and process data from the most reliable meta sources. Guys, let's start with a quick analysis of the impact of the new expansion. The Badlands expansion has already received four patches since its release, including one server update, and a patch that corrected the description of some cards that cause bugs. Numerous changes have led to a bubbling metagame. Typically, a month after release we get a relatively stable competitive environment, but this time changes continue to occur at all levels. With most strategies, players continue to experiment and look for the best build. At the same time, the overall popularity of cards from Badlands is rapidly declining. Players are gradually losing interest in new strategies and are looking for new cards to use in old archetypes. At the same time, the influence of Titan's expansion begins to grow. For this reason, in the new balance patch we received an upgrade to many key cards for new strategies, including a significant buff to the mining strategy. Let's talk about each class separately. The Death Knight received only one completely new archetype, the Highlander. In addition, all existing strategies have returned to the metagame. The overall popularity of the class is almost 20%. Reno Strategy is an expansion version of the Blood Archetype. The deck is effective at low ranks. The Unholy Archetype, despite its high popularity, demonstrates extremely low effectiveness. Rainbow and Frost Strategies are on the verge of extinction. Between Diamond and Legend ranks, the most effective and popular strategy is Plague. The Archetype absorbed the Mining Core and adapted Reska the Pit Boss. The effectiveness of this build is 58%. The only significant drawback is the cost of the deck. You will need 5 legendary and 6 epic cards, but upgrading to the new version will not be that expensive. In the wild format, we were unable to find stable effective decks. Demon Hunter remains the worst class in all traditional formats. All decks have extremely low efficiency. The new expansion added two new strategies. The dominance of the Naga archetype ended with a minor nerf to Blind Eye Sharpshooter. The effect of the card has not changed. The developers took only one life point from the creature, but this was enough to significantly reduce the effectiveness. The win rate of this version of the deck at high ranks is 51%, but an important advantage of the deck is its low cost. This build is practically free. In the wild format, the dominance of the Naga archetype also ended. Questline strategy is again the best in the class. This build has a 58% win rate near legend rank, but note the low popularity, which may not accurately reflect effectiveness. Druid continues to feel great. The overall popularity of the class is 13%. The three current archetypes are effective, but the most productive remains the new Dragon Druid. This build has a 61% win rate after the balance patch at high ranks. It is also worth noting the low cost. You only need two epic and one legendary cards. There is no clear favorite in the wild format. Players experiment with different strategies. The best one at the moment is the premium version of the dragon archetype. It turned out to be incredibly difficult to find at least some decks for the twist format, due to the extremely low popularity. The number of legendary players is decreasing every month. The popularity of the mode is significantly lower compared to classic. This is not just a failure, humanity has not yet come up with a name for this phenomenon. In twist mode, the druid is represented by the aggro beast archetype, but due to too little popularity throughout the month, we cannot reliably determine its effectiveness. The hunter, unlike the druid, is not as popular, although it also remains one of the favorites of the metagame. All his strategies remain effective. In my opinion, the low popularity of the class is due to the small number of completely new ideas. New synergies were swallowed up by old strategies. The main archetype within the class is Reno. Despite the huge number of different tools, the deck's playstyle is very similar to the hybrid archetype, but in this case the cost of the deck has gone far beyond common sense. In the wild format, players are also very actively experimenting with the Reno archetype. This is the most popular strategy within the class, despite this, the popularity of the hunter is also very low. 
In the twist format, Aggro Hunter continues to be the best strategy of the class. It is also impossible to objectively determine the effectiveness of the deck due to its extremely low popularity. The mage traditionally has a large number of strategies to choose from, but not all of them are equally effective. Badlands introduces mining synergies and several tools for the elemental archetype, but the best and most popular strategy is still the deck from the Titans expansion. The rainbow archetype has two versions. The first build is an adaptation of the version of the previous expansion. The second is more interesting for me, since it absorbed the mining core. Thanks to this, the deck received a second win condition. The legendary mage treasure as well as the warlock treasure are the most powerful in the new set. The wild format is dominated by the new expanded version of the quest archetype with Reno. The deck's key combo is Grand Magister Ramit, which endlessly repeats Potion of Illusion and Time Warp. It works like Shutterwalk but is an even more toxic synergy and I hate it. In the twist format, we were unable to find any mage decks at high ranks. It's time to talk about the most productive class in standard. Paladin remains the favorite of the game and I'm already pretty tired of his leadership. The new expansion added two new conditional archetypes to the list of the best decks, Reno and Showdown. Absolutely all strategies demonstrate positive win rates at high ranks. The best archetype after the nerf is Showdown. This is another modification of pure Paladin in an aggressive playstyle. The Countess is too strong and is an additional win condition. This build demonstrates the greatest effectiveness on the path to Legend. In the Wild format, the new Showdown spell also became the basis for the return of the aggro archetype. The deck is incredibly popular and effective at high ranks of the game. In the Twist format, players most often resort to using the Dude archetype. This is the most popular and most effective deck, although its statistics are based on only 400 games over the course of a month. The Priest is one of the classes that managed to tame the Ogre synergy, but this archetype is the worst within the class. In general, the Priest is in a kind of self-identity crisis. Players are tired of the undead archetype and are experimenting with other strategies, trying to make them work more effectively. The Evergreen Control archetype began to gradually transform into Reno. This is the most popular, but at the same time still experimental strategy. For this reason, we were unable to find a sufficiently stable build for you. In the Wild format, the class was much more fortunate. The Aggro Shadow archetype received a minor update after the release of Badlands. The deck demonstrates high efficiency on the road to Legend and is quite popular. It seems that the class is not represented in Twist mode. The situation with the Rogue makes me very sad. The class received the largest number of new strategies, Wishing, Mining and Ogre. Unfortunately, they are all too weak for competitive play. For this reason, players abandon experimentation and return to active use of the mech archetype. This build became the most popular within the class at high ranks after balance changes. The deck is a hybrid between the familiar mech archetype and the big strategy. Of the new cards, only Thunderbringer is used. In the wild format, the class does not have a specific favorite archetype. In my opinion, Kingsbane's strategy has more consistent performance. This build received an upgrade during the Titans expansion. The new set didn't change the deck in any way. In the twist format, Jade remains the best strategy within the class. Adding the Ngoro expansion to the pool of available sets further improved the build but did not produce fundamental changes in strategy. It's time to talk about the Shaman. The class now has two viable archetypes, Reno and Elemental. Unexpectedly for many, Reno's strategy has become the most popular archetype. In this fact, I am very pleased that Totem is no longer the leader. This version of the build, like other Highlander decks, are extremely expensive to craft. You will need at least 2 epic and 6 legendary cards. In the wild format, the battle between Reno and Totem strategy continues. After recent balance changes, the Totem archetype has finally become more popular but is not as impressive as before. The archetype has not undergone any changes after the release of the new set. The Shaman is not represented in the twist format. At least we have not been able to find stable decks at high ranks over the past 30 days. The situation with the Warlock looks too sad. After the nerf of the Azerite Snake, the mining strategy began to rapidly lose popularity and, most importantly, effectiveness. Another new sludge archetype looks too weak. Despite the fact that the warlock in this expansion is in a gang of villains and receives key advantages from the mining strategy, he tries to cooperate with the forces of good, adapting the Reno strategy without any advantages. 
Currently this build is the best option among the worst. It is also worth noting the low popularity, which makes the statistics of this deck unrepresentative. In the wild format, things are much better for Warlock. The main strategy remains Questline. The version with Giants has finally supplanted the control version of the deck and dominates in various variations at high ranks. In the Twist format, Warlock tries to experiment with different strategies, but their low popularity makes it difficult for us to determine the best decks. And finally it was the Warrior's turn. The class, like the Warlock, tried to adapt the Reno strategy, but it turned out to be a bad idea. The new Taunt archetype looks more like a joke and mining synergy is very rarely seen even as a core for other strategies. For this reason, old archetypes dominate and demonstrate positive effectiveness. The most popular remains the control archetype with Odin, although Enrage also remains quite effective. But we managed to find a build among control decks that at least partially uses the mining core. Among other top decks, the impact of the new cards is minimal. In the wild format, Odin also dominates among the best warrior strategies. The release of the new expansion did not affect the design of the deck in any way. The deck demonstrates impressive efficiency, but this result may not entirely correspond to reality due to low popularity. The warrior is represented at high ranks in the twist format by two strategies, Pirate and Nazoth. But their low popularity does not allow us to determine their effectiveness. Let's move on to conclusions. Showdown and the Badlands has a huge impact on the metagame. All top decks in standard contain at least one new tool. We haven't received such an influential set for a long time. But from the point of view of the variety of strategies, everything is not so phenomenal. The mining core failed to create individual viable archetypes. Typically, this synergy has become part of old strategies. The standard metagame is dominated by Reno decks. Most often, they collect cores of other synergies for productive play. In addition to mining or Reno archetype, each class received an additional strategy. Unfortunately, most of them are too weak and incompetitive. Despite the shortcomings, I really like the new set. Weak additional archetypes may indicate an attempt by the developers to reduce the overall power level of new sets next year. Judge for yourself, mining archetypes by themselves are not that strong. Highlander decks will become significantly weaker after rotation, this is inevitable, since half of the current cards will leave the standard format. Or maybe you guys are completely wrong. I believe that throughout this phase, the Hearthstone team will gradually increase the power of new cards by implementing balance patches. We've already seen a similar strategy in the last few expansions. Dear viewers, what about you? Which scenario do you think is more realistic? And the second question. Are you satisfied with the impact of the new expansion on the metagame? Share your thoughts in the comments and join the polls in the community tab. Finally, we want to express our boundless gratitude to our sponsors. Dear friends, your support is invaluable. Many thanks to each of you. We also want to welcome new subscribers to our mathematician squad. We only see nicknames of public users who have not hidden the subscription section on their channel, but we are grateful to everyone for joining. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for spending this time with us. We really hope that we will have the opportunity to get in touch in the next video. Take care of yourself. And never give up. Job's done.